Today we're going to take a closer look at clematis. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings and there's just so many beautiful clematis that are blooming right now out in the greenhouse. I thought I would go ahead and give you a closer look at just some of the beautiful blooms. One thing I do want to tell you about clematis is the color of the flower is a little bit dependent on the environment that it's in. So if it's grown in sun or if it's grown in shade or if it's a humid or less humid condition, you will see some variation on the color of clematis. So that's one question I frequently get is, why does my clematis flower not look like the picture I saw? So just to be forward and be out there with you, there's a lot of variations that can affect the flower, of, the flower color of clematis. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of these varieties. This here is the crystal fountain clematis. Let's go in and take a closer look. Here we have the Crystal Fountain Clematis. It features lilac blue double blooms that reach four to five inches across. This is one of the first clematis that starts blooming in my garden. It grows five to seven foot tall, so the perfect size for small trellises or even if you're doing container gardens. One thing I will point out about the flower we're seeing today is that typically when it is grown out in my garden, I am seeing a lot more of that lilac or that lavender blue coloration we're being grown here in the greenhouse, we're seeing a little bit more of the kind of chartreuse or even of a brownish feeling stripe to this plant. So when it's outdoors, you would expect to see more of the purple tones coming through. Here we have Clematis Niobe. Let's take a closer look. Clematis Niobe is known for very dark ruby red flowers with the pointed petals and gold antlers. Typically Niobe would bloom June through September. It likes to be grown in full sun to part shade location and gets about eight foot tall at maturity. One thing I will point out about the current flower color is we're seeing a lot of magenta and even purple shades coming through. So when this is grown out in the yard with more sun, we do definitely see the more ruby red coloration as mentioned in the description of this plant. But this is a perfect example of how especially with red clematis, a lot of times you will see some magenta and purple hues that do come through. Clematis Diana's Delight. Let's take a closer look. Clematis Diana's Delight has beautiful, rich blue colored flowers with light and dark tones and a very creamy yellow center. This is a free flowering clematis that blooms from June to September. It likes to be grown in full sun to part shade location and gets about six inches tall. So the current flowers that we're seeing here on Clematis Diana are what I would say are pretty true to the color that I see when they are growing out in my yard. A beautiful kind of periwinkle bluish purple, beautiful, <laughs> large, beautiful flowers. So this one here I would say is very true to its normal blooming color. Here we have the Paracene Boulevard Clematis. Let's take a closer look. The Boulevard series of clematis are known for their compact habit. Paracene Boulevard gets only 48 inches tall. That's four foot tall. It produces an abundance of pale violet flowers with wavy edge petals and attractive red antlers. It blooms June through September. So this would be a perfect size for patio containers or short trellises in your garden. And this one here blooming with its purple that we're seeing or lavender that we're seeing is very true to the color that I would normally see when it's planted out in my garden. Clematis Eda. Let's take a closer look. Clematis Eda is a compact and free flowering clematis. Each flower has six to ten sepals giving it a semi double appearance. Flowers are purple with a dark reddish purple center. It blooms June through August. Compact in size this only reaches four to six foot tall. The flowers are a little bit smaller than some of the clematis that we've looked at this far, but I think it's very pretty how we're getting that beautiful kind of bicolor or two-tone look in each of these flowers. This is the flower color that I would expect to see when growing in my garden. Here we have the Clematis Boulevard Vicky. Let's take a closer look. Clematis Boulevard Vicky, the reason why I'm showing you these two individual blooms is just to show you some of the differences of what the blooms could look like. So this one here is a fresh bloom that is just emerging from the plant. And this one here in my hand that I pulled off of another plant is an older spent bloom. You can see how as the bloom ages, it lightens up in color. Boulevard Vicky Clematis is an exceptional and attractive free flowering clematis. 
beautiful pink with dark magenta striped centers. This plant grows three to four foot tall and is a perfect size clematis for container gardens or for small patio spaces. Blooming throughout the summer, it likes to be planted in full sun to part shade locations. Clematis Nelly Moser, one of the most popular clematis varieties that we sell. Let's take a closer look. Clematis Nelly Moser is a long blooming clematis, blooming in May, June, and again in September. Large flowers that reach seven to nine inches across. This plant growing seven to nine foot tall is a nice size clematis for your garden. Planted on a trellis, planted on a fence, Nelly Moser is one of the varieties that can handle just a little bit more shadier locations. I never recommend full shade for clematis, but if you do have an area that is a little bit more on the shady side, it will handle growing there, as well, of course, as in a full sun location. Beautiful pale pink petals with that beautiful striped magenta center. And then what about that center? Isn't that a beautiful contrast to those petals? We were coming out in the greenhouse today to do another video on the rest of the clematis. And as you can see, they're looking very nice and uniform right now. So instead of actually talking to you about more clematis blooms, we're going to talk to you about how we maintain these clematis in the greenhouse. So the team actually is out here right now doing trimming and tying up of the vines. So we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at how that process works. And part of the reason for that process, obviously, you know, clematis are vines. And if we just let them go, they would get all tangled in one another. And that makes it really hard for pulling the plants for shipping and even for shipping them out. So let's take a look at the team and see exactly what they're doing to get these clematis all ready for shipping. So the team has their workstations, be it a shopping cart or be it a work, uh, work table. What they're doing is they are pulling the trays of the vines out off the floor and they are gathering the vines, taking a twisty and twist tying them to about a 12 inch bamboo stake. The twist tie is helping keeping that vine so it's going upwards as they set them back down again. So when you order clematis from Garden Crossings, more than likely, this is our one quart size, more than likely they're only going to be about 10 to 12 inches tall. And that is because we are constantly trimming on them to keep them from getting tangled in the greenhouse. So you can see they're going in and giving them a little trim, tying them up. And it actually looks like they're trimming them just a little bit shorter than the stake. And that's going to allow them to have a little extra time before we have to be out here trimming again. Clematis is definitely a very high maintenance variety to take care of in the greenhouses because this what you're seeing happening today this has to happen about every two to three weeks two to three weeks just to keep the plants looking nice uh, in the description below i am going to be putting a link to clematis care instructions as well as an article or a blog that we've written on um, that's just got a wealth of information on glowing on growing clematis and how you can feel successful with growing them. They are one of my favorite flowers. Actually, it's the first flower that we ever started growing here at Garden Crossings. And these are the flowers that started off our mail order company. So I'm really passionate about clematis. I love them. I have several in my garden. And I just, I want to share with you and I want you to be able to feel confident when you're growing them in your garden. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.